to worship her. So Abraham, he received a call from God. He was appointed as a messenger. And then he became the, the father of all the messengers after him. Isaac, Ismail, Jacob, Moses, David, Suleiman, Zachariah, all of them, they come from the line of Abraham. So if Abraham, when God called him, if he would have said, this is my father, this is my people, I was born into this, then would he have made the right decision? That's the problem because that's what Christianity, Christianity is also saying. Yeah. yeah. I understand where you're coming from. Uh -huh. If you tell me the same thing, and I go meet a Christian brother, he tells me, leave this man alone. Yeah. Listen to me. Uh -huh. If I go meet a Jew, yeah. he tells me the same thing. Of course. But it's just better you just, um, I'm going to take this to get uh -huh. more knowledge about uh -huh. Islam. Yeah. And I leave the remaining one for the Holy Spirit and God to minister unto me. Uh -huh. Because if you if you convince me, yeah. you're not going to be with me forever. Uh -huh. I'm going home, I'm going to see you on that, uh, maybe a pastor in my house. Uh -huh. And he tells me, no, I should be able to talk to you next time. Uh -huh. You get so it's just better. Can I can I tell you something from Quran? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I believe what you're saying. I'm not arguing yeah, anything. Yeah. I don't argue. I just believe and I begin to look. Then I go home and look for God myself. Yeah. Yeah. Because God, I may go home and God says, "Go become a Muslim." Yeah. You you were, you were in the Church of England. Uh -huh. Most likely, the Holy Spirit or God minister to leave the Church of England and become a Muslim, right? Uh -huh. Is that what God says? I, no, not like this. Not like this. See, the, the thing is, when I was around 16, 17, I became interested in life. What is life for? What is right? What is wrong? And because being English, like as a child, I, w I went to Sunday school. You know, generally English people, not everyone, but they're not as religious as other countries. We're more free. We're, we're left to choose. But being English, the first thing I looked at was Christianity. So when I looked at Christianity, I liked it, but it didn't convince me. So I liked the stories of Jesus, but I didn't feel the pull to become a Christian. But then I felt to myself, that there's God, uh, Jesus was a, was a pious person, a righteous person, a good person. Um, I believe the Bible was the book of God, but I, I, I felt it didn't uh, give structure or commandments. It is very vague. So I looked at Judaism and I, as in the Old Testament, and I found more laws, you know, dietary laws, uh, how you live your life, what is forbidden, etc. So I, I began to follow this. But I wasn't convinced. So I looked at uh, Hinduism, I looked at Buddhism. But then, later on, a, a few years later, following this way, a Muslim brother, he'd, he'd embraced Islam a year before, a West Indian. He came to me and my friends and he spoke about Islam for about five, ten minutes. He was so simple, so straightforward. It was like, um, the, the example I give is, you know my coat. I, I come to your house and I leave my coat in your house. And then as I'm leaving, you call me and you say, Yusuf, you know you forgot your coat. Like, okay, yeah, yeah. Something which I wasn't aware of, but as soon as you told me, is yeah, I go back and get my coat. So for me, it was that's how I found Islam. And then I obviously I've been Muslim now nearly 30 years. So my understanding, I've, I've increased my understanding, my uh, certainty is increased. But just something which you said, as for wanting good for each other. Okay, we want good for each other in this life. If you're hungry, if you need medicine, if I'm your neighbor and, you, and I need some kind of help, you help me. We have this help. But the real good we should want for mankind is success in the hereafter. Because guaranteed, we are going to leave this world. And as we believe, the hereafter is forever. So the idea of, I don't want to offend you, I don't want to argue with you, and, but you believe that I am wrong, or I believe that you're wrong, and we just, just for the sake of peace and uh, we don't mention it. This is, I would say this is wrong. If we believe something is true, we have to explain to the person. We, we don't have to, like as a Muslim, we believe we should explain to people. We shouldn't insult people, we shouldn't uh, belittle them, we shouldn't mock them, but we can say, 
I believe this is wrong. As a Christian, you can say to me, like for example, as Muslims, if someone is going to mock Islam or insult us, then we're going to say, okay, conversation over. But if you're going to come to me and say, look, I don't believe in Islam for this reason, or the Quran doesn't make sense for this reason, you know, this we, obviously I don't agree, but we're open to conversation. But there needs to be this uh, conversation. We can't just uh, leave it for the sake of politeness. But in the Quran, uh, in the second chapter, there's a very interesting verse. It, it mentions the Arabic is It says there's no compulsion in religion. You can't force me to leave Islam. I can't force you to be Muslim. We can't force each other. But then the verse continues and says, but the truth is clear from error. The truth should be very clear. So for example, when we say that God is one, we, I've never come across a person who disagrees with this. Even for example, those people who worship, we would say hundreds of gods, hundreds of idols. They will say, no, we believe that the Almighty is, is one, but these gods, these different statues are, are manifestations. I mean, definitely they're gods. They may, they've taken those gods. Or they will say these are a means uh, to get to God. We worship this one to please God. We worship this one to get to God. Even the Christians, when they say, I mean, at different groups, but generally the Christian will say that the Father is fully God, the Son is fully God, the Holy Spirit is fully God, and then they will say the Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is not the Father. So they will, they will say three persons, but they will ins always insist there's one God, because it's something which the soul accepts even though they have just said there's three gods. Because once you say something is fully God, and, it's, and there's another thing which is fully God, and there's another thing which is fully God, and they're not each other, it's three gods. But people will always... So what I mean to say is the truth is always clear. So when you say there's one God, a person will understand it. When we say, for example, that you should look after your parents, a person understands it from the heart. When a person says don't lie, don't cheat, a person understands it. So the thing is, the truth should be clear. So if we look at some of the, because I'm, I'm talking to you as a Christian, when we look at some of the, like what I mentioned before about Jesus, when those people who say that Jesus, they say we believe in God, we believe in Moses, we believe that Moses received the, the law on Mount Sinai. They, they believe in this. But then Jesus comes as a messenger sent by God with signs and miracles from God and they reject him. We say these people, they have rejected the one who sent God. If you, accept, if you reject the messenger, then you, reset, then you have rejected the one who sent him. Let's put them to the side. Now, when Jesus comes and he says to the people that he has a God, he worships God, he submits himself to God, he calls mankind to worship God. Hear, hear O Israel, our Lord God is one Lord. This is what Jesus says to the people. Jesus said, you know the famous verse in John 17, 3, he said that this is life eternal, that they may know you, the one true God, the, one, the only true God, and Jesus Christ who you have sent. So Jesus is saying that there is one, there's only one true God and it's not him. You know, so Jesus, when the person came to him and said, oh good, oh good master, how might I attain salvation? And Jesus says to him, why do you call me good? There is only one that is good and that is God. Then he says, if you wish to obtain salvation, he didn't say, this is the, the perfect time. He didn't say, if you wish to obtain that salvation, believe that I am God, believe that I am part of God, believe that I'm going to die for your sins. He said, if you wish to obtain salvation, keep the commandments. So even this, this belief, we find it something which the human heart can't accept, that Jesus is God, or Jesus is fully human and fully God. This is an idea which people repeat with their mouths, but it doesn't settle in the heart. So we say the only thing which is reasonable is that Jesus was a messenger and he told people to worship the one true God. And after him a messenger came 
the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, with the same way of life, the same message to worship one God. How does that sound? Yeah, I, I know all this way I seem. I'll just take your number. No problem. We'll talk another time. Okay. Yeah. I'll put it in here. Oh, you want me to write it? Yeah, I have a pen. Okay. I've been working all day. No problem, sorry. Yeah. Oh, does anyone have a pen? Uh, I have a pen. Okay. Well, no, no problem. How are you, brother? You okay? Thank you. Oh, sure, no problem. Your name is Yusuf? Yusuf, yeah. Okay. As in, you know Joseph? Okay. Oh, seven. Oh. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah, you can WhatsApp me questions or we can talk okay. or we can meet again. Okay. You stay around? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're here every Saturday, usually from around 3 till 7 o'clock. Okay. And I live here, Plaster. So. It's alright, I'll meet you here then. No problem, yeah. sir. Thank, Thank you, you very much for your time. Okay. okay, all the best. Cheers. Okay.